Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I did get some stitching done last night. I managed to overcast stitch the entire outside of any piece that I thought was a little bit delicate. So that's done. Um, and then I was able to start on the design here with the um, crochet cotton. Number five, a crew, no, number eight, a crew. So I was really pleased. I was, if I'd only had a little bit more time, I would have finished those two, but um, I still, I got a good hour and a half of stitching in. So that was lovely. Everyone was just sitting around chatting, so they know me now. They know that I will have something somewhere that I'll just pick up and start stitching. So it was really, really good evening. Well, for me and stitching. I also dampened a cloth just to test that pen. Like it makes me nervous when I try pens that are new and it's really good. Um, I just gently dabbed on and let the moisture soak into the fabric um, and the white mark just dissolved. So really happy with that. I did notice that a little bit of blue um, dye came out of that fabric so yeah I'd be pretty concerned if I'd put this into the wash and there was white fabric near it I think I might be yeah not real happy with bleeding blue fabric so that was a bit disappointing I'm pretty sure from memory when I was at school and home economics you could add salt I'd have to research that, but I think you can add salt to the water and soak fabrics in it that you need to be colour fast. But yeah, that was a bit of a disappointment. So it certainly would lose its um, blue intense colour a little after being laundered. So yeah, just a heads up on just watch it wash. No, not wash. Watch your fabrics. Do a little test with a damp cloth and just see if some of that colour comes out. So there, there. That's it. That's about the latest news. There's nothing really exciting happening at the moment. This is an absolute pleasure to stitch, might I say, this project. It's simple. I don't have to think. I'm getting a little bit of piecework you know piecing it all together so there's that design element then it's invisible stitch overcast stitch and then decorative stitch and then coming back at the very end and just seeing this any little morsels that can be added just to make the piece look even more interesting so absolutely loving it and it's not too big it's not overwhelming this in itself is taking, you know, many hours. I probably would sneak to a piece that was maybe 10 inch by 10 inch, a slightly bigger one. This one is um, five and a half by five and a half, wasn't it? Where's my little ruler? I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was. Let's just double check, six and a half by six and a half so yeah i'd maybe go to ten ten and a half you'd have a little bit more space to showcase something especially if it was an embroidery design that you wanted to pop on the side you could do a sewing themed one oh the endless endless pick a theme any theme Yeah, really, really enjoying it. I hope it all comes together in the end. I guess I'm pretty sure it will. I've had a little fiddle with the panels sitting on the side and I'm confident I have enough strength for the bag to sit on its own, you know, in its own integrity. It will be soft and pliable, but it's sort of similar to ones you see on the shelf that are, 
you know, fabric bags. They sort of have a sloshy feel about them. So I'm pretty confident it will be okay. We might have a little play with the how we're going to attach it at the end of this video. We'll get this little bit stitched. It shouldn't take me too long. Get this done. And then um, we'll try and nut out how we attach them. I'm thinking it'll just be invisible stitch. You know, they're, they're like um, cladding. So I just need to get some little stitches in to hold it into position. I could probably whip stitch the outer edges with something that would join it on to each other from the previous panel. I'm, I'm sure we'll work something out. Could even use like a hessian thread, something like a linen thread, not hessian. Yeah, well, could do. I don't know. We'll get to that bridge when we get to it. Okay. I'm thinking I wouldn't mind a little stitchery journal that was themed in this styling. And that way, if I just want to do a little piece or I see something or I buy a little morsel or two of fabric and I just want to have a play with them, I would have a journal then that I could put uh, Japanese inspired pieces in. Is sort of what I'm thinking. It'd be a very, very handy little journal to have. Hopefully one day I'll get to Japan. We had this, I think I told you, I may have told you in the previous videos, we had a trip planned to Japan. Just didn't make it. It would have been great. Yeah, I think I did mention it because I remember a day or so ago I mentioned that my friends are touring Japan at the moment and it's right in the middle of the cherry blossom, the cherry blossom um, festivals, which would be beautiful. So you'll see that this is quite quick and because it's pre drawn onto the fabric you really don't need to think too hard I'm gonna go over to that one I'm trying to work out a path where you sort of can keep rolling without jumping across too far so I'm thinking if I go over here So you can do stab stitch where you just come up and down on each one or you can do you know with your needle scooting through but that's a lot of tension on your fingers you're really pushing pushing your fabrics uh, pushing your needle through your fabrics because remember there's quite a bit of thickness here I must show you a panel that I found when I was ratting around looking for something. It's a Japanese panel that I've now put in my to-be-completed one-day box. Pre-printed, it's cherry blossoms. And I was pleased when I found it because I haven't been able to find a cherry blossom stencil yet. And I was like, oh, I really want a cherry blossom somewhere. And they're in the back of my mind. And then I found this panel and I'm like, oh, okay. So I do have a piece that has cherry blossoms on it that I could probably, you know, stitch. So it's taken my mind away from cherry blossoms a bit. So that's good. I ordered those templates I showed you yesterday. I don't think they'll arrive in time for this particular project, but um, I have a feeling I will be playing 
with some Japanese fabrics. Again, I've still got heaps left. Like, you do not need a lot. We well, just know that already if you've been slow stitching with the Roxy Journal of Stitchery Projects. You'll know that a little bit of fabric goes a long way. So, I have plenty here on my desk. And when I found that cherry blossom panel, I was like, ooh, maybe... I could do something with that next. Oh, I'm all crooked. See, I got all excited. Crooked stitch. I've got three bags, the linings here cut out. So one is going to be the Japanese. I'm not sure what the other ones are going to be yet. It might be a Japanese, but it might not be. I know I just want to use this concept to showcase different projects that are either want to just do a little play with the project maybe before I do a bigger project or if I've done a bigger project and I'm I want to just record or use up some scraps from it in a similar styling so I'm going to keep my linings they're ready to go and then I can just grab the panels I've got them all stitched now that's all of the bases for the pretty outers so I can just grab five and away I go on a completely different theme or I can do another Japanese like yeah so that's the plan with the bags so I will finish up this little series focusing just on this particular bag and then we'll see what comes next who knows that um, panel I found is certainly grabbing my attention. But I'll mull it around and see, see what comes of it. Someone's pinging me. I might just turn my phone down just in case it gets crazy. It's inter oh, that went crooked. I might finish this little bit of thread off, I think. I must say thank you, thank you for your kind comments. My goodness, you lot. I tell you, you're all a bit special. I really do appreciate the encouragement. Like everything, we, we're in our little craft rooms and often we don't really get a chance to mingle too many with like-minded folk. So to have you guys all part of my projects and providing some comments that maybe th make me think of something different. Like, it's amazing. I read your comments and I'm like, oh, I like that idea. And what if I could do that? And what if I do that? And, you know, just, it's like we're sitting around my table just chitty-chatting. Except I'm getting to say most of the chitty-chat. <laughs> but it's, it's lovely. So I do appreciate all your comments and I try, well, I do, I reply to everyone, every comment I, I read and reply to. I really enjoy the process of that. So, yeah. Okay, so I've just got this one last little, so it doesn't take too long. I suppose I did get a little bit done last night because I didn't want to waste another whole video just working around that piece here and okay oh something else I wanted to show you when I went to spotlight yesterday and got that white pen um before I went I was you know ratting around in my cottons looking for some blue that would match and of course there wasn't much wasn't much in the way of that particular blue just the scrap that was on that reel now all of those reels that I was ratting through they came from my grandmother's sewing room when we tidied up the house when she went into a nursing home and I said to her at the time I said oh, I'm, I've, I've commandeered all of those cottons that were in your room and there's hundreds of them now if you've only just joined my channel you'll 
not know that my grandmother was a dressmaker. And so these cottons are like a journal, if you will, of, uh, I was just get, getting my pins, see, all my pins into a pile. They were a little, getting a little out of hand. So yeah, what I was saying is this is my grandmother's cottons. So as you can see, being a dressmaker and a bridal, that one's mine, that's from my quilting days, invisible thread. Um, she was a bridal wedding dressmaker. So what you're seeing there is like a snapshot of bridal sewing. And I just think it's so interesting. I can, I don't know, without even looking too far, I can sort of see the trends of color. That's an old girl. It's got a sheen about it. Hmm. That might be good for a bit of slow stitch. Like that's an interesting thread. Wonder what its story is. Yes, Casper. Hello, how are you? So it's cordage. Number nine cordage. I wonder what she would have used that for. Oh, who knows? The stories that would be in this box. And, of course, when I was looking for that blue, like how many blues are in here? There was a lot of bridesmaids that wanted blue, and I could not see a nice dark blue that um, matched that fabric that I'm working with. Some of them are brand new. They're still in their plastic wrap. So I've been for a little while just rolling my eyes around the perimeter to see if there's a cotton that matches what I'm looking for. And it's just, yeah, I'm sure they're in the middle, but I can't, can't see them. So my husband made a comment because he was sitting there watching me look for a blue. Then I decided I didn't have any more and I would actually buy one myself that would match into this little project. Anyway, he said, you need a container to put them all in. I said, yeah, I do, but I just haven't seen any for ages. A lot of those types of storage containers seem to be out of stock a lot. And, um, yeah, dead set. I walk up to the big stack of cottons, the wall of cottons, and what is sitting on top of the stand but this spool organiser. So it holds up to 80 Having said that, some of them are small little reels, so I'd probably be able to stack two on a spike. So I was very impressed. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. So that's going to be my job this afternoon. I'm going to unpack <clears throat> unpack Grandma's cottons, slide them all on the spools. So here's two here. I pulled this one out the other day because it's sort of similar to those browns not as good as one that I did find the next day this one here it's more of a mustardy it actually looks like she's unpicked something see how that's really grandma was a shocker she would unpick things and salvage she yeah that looks like that has come out of something or it's been on another Real, I don't know. It's not sitting right. It's not machine wound. Who knows what she was up to? It could even be multiple lengths that have all been cut and she salvaged them. Goodness knows. I use this one a lot too. It seems to blend really well. This goldy, mustardy cut. Anyway, look, I'm getting sidetracked. What am I doing? Um. Okay. I think I've finished all the stitching. I guess the next question, other than a little bit of moisture, is what other little morsels can we pop on it? Let's have a look at this little guy. Maybe we put him on and we do a little X on there. I'm thinking we could do something with him. No. I reckon that's pretty good. And we need to visible stitch him down. So let's have a look in Grandma's box of tricks here. 
and see if there's cotton that would sort of suit. I'm just going to have a look at this one. It might be a bit bright. I think that might do the trick, you know. Might be that one. Gosh, you wouldn't think there was blue was blue. But there is blue and then there's blue. Not too large. I know when I was doing a lot of quilting, grey was a great colour. Like here's a grey. It just blended with everything. It doesn't blend with that. Forget that sentence. But it was often the base thread was always a grey. It seemed to be the colour that was the go-to when I was doing that type of work. I might just get my X on. I've got the thread on the needle. I can always do the invisible stitch around it. Unless this will hold it. What about those other X's they do? Um, no. I'm going to stay with this style. I don't want to bring too many more new new things in I like you can get to a point where it's just getting silly just a nice x like that then I'll come back with the invisible thread and we'll secure that little guy down Then, see we've got three patches, we might have a, a bit of a look at um, how we're going to attach that thread is showing up. Oh no, that's all right. When I pulled it tight, it blended in with the fabric a little. Keep it into tiny little stitches just around the perimeter of our little patch. It's like we're mending, putting little patches on things because there's a hole. So that's what I'll be doing this afternoon. I'm going to sort out those cottons. And then when I need to match a fabric, especially doing this type of work and you want to, you know, have the rough edge, but you don't want it to be completely disintegrating on you. So you want to do a little bit of overcast stitch. You're going to need a bit of a selection of colours when you're doing this style of work. So I'm forever having a look in there. And it's getting hard to look. I like the little detail that's added to that little patch of fabric. You're probably not picking up on it, but as the needle comes through, it's like splitting the fibers of the fabric and there's an underlying white fiber within it. And it's giving it a little frosty finish to the edge of the piece. I'm going to change my style here. It's a bit quicker where you slide your needle along and come up next to yourself, not over and under, over and under. We still get the a wrap, but it just seems a little bit quicker. So I might just zoom in and show you what I'm talking about because you're thinking, what's she doing? So normally you're just over and under, over and under, and you're wrapping it. Let me just zoom in a little bit, and I'll show you what I did there. 
So I'm going across the edge, but then I'm coming up beside. And then I go over that edge, but then I scoot to the side. So you're sort of prepping your next little stitch. So it becomes a little bit quicker. You can only really do it when you're doing this style of patch. If you were on the edge, you'd, you, you've got to do that over the edge stitch. But when I get to a corner, I just go back to the wrap. And I'll just literally poke it in, pull it out, poke it in. But once I get around my edge here, this corner, I'm going to need thread. left it's so nice when I finish one and it's gone mind you then you've got to go and buy another one like mm -hmm. what's happened with that blue I'll be a little annoyed if there is a blue in there I should have probably upended them and checked properly but it doesn't matter so I'm just now doing that same little stitch just sliding sideways as I go it's at least double the speed then save you guys sitting there <clears throat> mind you I know you're all working you're busy doing something you're stitching something unless you're lying in bed listening to my neurotic tones is that the word melon no it's not melon tones oh, I don't know my my tones and it's putting you to sleep someone said that to me and I thought oh I should be doing those sleep those sleep um, tapes that you can listen to that make you go to sleep I bought an audio book years ago and I thought oh they, that's the way to go let me zoom out an audio book to listen to Let's go out because I never get time to read. I'd rather stitch than read. And it puts me to sleep. I've got to stitch, sit up and listen. Because um, I think it was Bryce Courtney. Um, oh, the power of one or... It was one set in South Africa. So the reader of the story was South African. I don't think it was Bryce Courtney. And every time I put it on, I'd be lying in bed listening to it and I'd be out I'd barely get I think halfway down the page out like a light so I probably need to do it while I'm stitching I think there we go we have another panel look at that isn't that just the coolest so we've got three now so what I want to do next we'll start a new panel but in the next video let's have a little play with how are we going to install these panels? Because technically, they should be stitched together like this. On a sewing machine, right sides together, straight down there, open it up, and you've got your bag. But I don't want to lose some of my work into that side seam. So I made a decision right at the very beginning that we were going to attempt to hand stitch them into position so let's hope that that hasn't backfired surely it will work we'll make it work so they're exactly the same size as the internal bag we've got the inside of the bag looking nice so that's definitely right let's get some pins So I think if we just match up all the corners, get them pinned first. Now remember there'll be a little 
loop needing to be added so that the cordage or the strap can also be added. But I'm on the bottom at the moment. bottom of the little bag I think this will work now I'm okay with seeing on the side seam all of the layers because I think that's going to add an actual design detail to it and because it's all toning, my lining is matching pretty much the project on the outside. My overcast stitch or my stitching is the same color as the lining. So I'm really happy. See, there's a little puckery corner. So I'm just gonna open that up so that my, my decorative piece is going to sit flat. Okay, so that's it pinned. Now I can't see why I can't come through with needle and thread. Maybe a blue because of this is blue and invisible stitch that into the seam. Remember the one and a half inch seam? I think that'll work. I could probably even just come up into the meat of that seam. I don't think that'd be too much of a problem. Let's have a go. And then do the next side and the next side. I, I think that'll work. There are little tiny invisible stitches. The side is open so I can get needles in there. It's like when we stitch works into our journals. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, a lot of our embroidery is being stored in stitchery journals and you sort of need to I need a bit of knot you need to sort of slip your, your needle and thread in amongst many layers to secure your piece into I'll just get this knot in place and if I stay out in the meat of the seam well then yeah you won't see see now i can scoot through those layers come up again do a stitch through jump over if there was a pretty side there which there will be eventually i would just scoot through the layers like it's so thick I've scooted through there. You can see my stitch, but there's nothing decorative here yet. So I can take that liberty, but I've just scooted through that thickness and you'd never know. So I think this will work a treat. Let's just stitch side. So if you're following along with me, I'm not going to make my stitches too big. I'm getting a bit carried away there. I'm just going to back it down to maybe half a centimetre, 10 mil, just so that they're close together. It's nice and secure. See, that's not coming apart and you can't even see where I was. There's the first one and there's no more because there's just so much chunkiness in there that, yeah, it'll work a treat. It's just about matching a thread to suit. So I will probably, on some of these other panels, I'd have to change to a beige, um, back to a blue. So that'll be a bit fiddly, but I think it'll be worth it to have that edge and to have more space to do some designing on. It'd be a shame to lose You know, yeah, really good. I'm running out of thread, so we'll get to that corner. Just might just come right through that way. I know it's secure. And I'm not 
catching anything I shouldn't be. It's easy enough to find a little hidey spot to end your cotton on. That's barely a knot, Corinne. Go back, finish that off. Lovely, that is going to work a treat. So that's completely secure there now. And then I would, once I've got the bottom in place, everything's fine inside, nothing got caught. Now once I get this bottom piece in place, I then can have a look at this one. And same thing, just go around, open up all of those little corners, see how you can lie it flat by folding it out, get them all into position, pin them over to this corner. Make sure it's all nice and flat, which it is. Pin it. It's going to bend a few pins. I need to get my heavy duty pins out because I've got a lot of layers here. A lot. That pin didn't even get through it all. There we go. That's That's got it. So that's all pinned. Then come up this side seam because there'll be another piece go here. That will be all stitched. Some of these older steel pins would be the ones to use. Those little ones with the pretty heads, they're lightweight. Give a little bit. I might have to dig around and find some real old, old pins. Some of these. They're just a heavier gauge. Now the only thing we've got to work out before we get carried away is this top edge needs to have that loop inserted. So I think what I can do is leave, leave that edge open and then I can come back when we work out what we're doing with the loops. So really the only fiddly bit is just in the bottom corners, the sides on any panel is really quite simple. Oh, it's so good because I'm not losing that design. That's where the idea came to me. I just didn't want to go to all that effort. And there we have an, a side on. See how it's standing? Let me come up a little bit. See how it's standing on its own accord? That's really good. So then we've got the third one and I guess we need to just have a look at where we want the design. See how that one is there and then that one's there. I might change that so that it's, or do I put it there? Yeah, I think I'll put it there. So just be mindful of, I can't pin into there because it's not stitched and it's going to smack into some pins but I can get a rough idea to show you so this might be my homework I might get these panels actually stitched into position leaving that edge open I won't go crazy with the pins I'll just poke that through just to give you a bit of an idea because I really need to stitch the first the bottom first it's getting a bit bodgy down there and there, that will be my little container. What do you think? Not bad, hey? Okay, so let's just undo the two that I put on. Put them to one side, because we know it's going to work. Let's go back to that base and carry on. I need to have a little think about the loops. Are we going to embellish the loops or are we going to keep it plain? Um, yeah, so 
decisions. So in the meantime, let's get this stitched on. Like I like the rough edged look, but I don't like it crazy. All these little threads. I know when I get to the end of the project, I'll go around with my little scissors and snip off any little edges, I think, just for my own sanity. Okay. Well, that's going to work. There we go. I will be able to slip stitch on all of these little panels. Keep the full decorative edge at this, the biggest size possible without losing it into, you know, the, the work. So that got stitched and that needle can, pin can go and that can come in in the back there. So there we go. That's what I will do, I think, as my homework. And then tomorrow we will create another panel. I'm going to come through to the other side just to make sure that it's definitely nice and secure, I think. This thing is sliding around. Why is this so? We'll be fiddly having to change threads due to the color on the panel and you want to hide your threads, I think. I think that would be recommended. You could overcast all the way around I'm not going to on this project because it's going to interfere with the embroidery. But um, you could probably do that if you did a quilted piece where you stitched all your panels in straight lines and it was all done on a sewing machine. You could overcast that edge as a bit of a decorative feature. It really just comes down to, I think, um, what what design you have on your bag. Not that this is a bag. If you want to use it as a bag, just remove the thickness of it all. Now remember, I've used a canvas style fabric. It's not a full on canvas. It certainly is a soft canvas. I bought it at, a, uh, at the sewing lair and it was really wrinkled. So I have a feeling that maybe it had been washed, which would remove a lot of that stiff stiffness that they have in that canvas. So if you're out and about looking at canvases and you're thinking, gee, that's hard and stiff, maybe just get a little bit of it, go home and wash it and see if that softens it. I think it will, because this was really, really wrinkled. Usually when you see it on a bolt of fabric in the stores, it um, doesn't look crushed. So I think it got washed. I'm just not 100% sure. Because I've avoided buying canvas in the past because I thought, well, what would I ever use it for unless you're on a sewing machine? What's the good of it to me as hand sewing? But when I found it in the op shop, I was not op shop, the sewing lair, I was like, hmm, you are quite, quite nice. Okay, so now I'm getting down to this little corner. So I'm just going to pop a few extra stitches in there just to make sure that that's nice and secure. it. What is those threads? Let's just do a little trim. It's annoying me. Okay. Now 
away we go again. Riveting viewing. But I think you're probably itching to attach them to the lining. So I thought, well, let's just do it. Plus, I guess we need to find out now before we get too much further if the whole idea was even going to work. Which it will. Going for time. Let's put my spectacles back on. Ah, oh, plenty of time. We should be able to get this base done. Yeah, that's good. Happy with that. I'm glad I chose the denim. I was cursing it when I was doing all that boro stitch. Oh boy. I was really cursing it. It. It's given it a really nice textured base. I'm just going to knot off now. My thread is disappearing fast. Okay. And let's go again. When you buy a new cotton like this guy and you look at it and you go, okay, where is it? There's 547 yards or 500 meters for the Aussies. And then you finish it. Then you finish another one and another one, especially that cream. And you know it hasn't been on a sewing machine. It's been in your hand sewing part of your supplies. Oh boy, I think I've just stitched a thousand meters, which is a kilometer. And I think I've got about four of them empty sitting there, which has just gone into, you know, probably the last 18 months of stitching. That's pretty epic. Let's stitch my way. I sort of then apply those distances to my childhood and when you're first learning about distance and kilometres and that, you sort of landmark things. And where the original farm was that I grew up at and the little town where school was, was 11 and a half kilometres. So ever since that little realisation went into my brain as a child, it was sort of my little, and that would take 13 minutes travel time or 15 minutes travel time and then you think okay to the next town which turned out to be where I did senior it was um, 20 kilometers so yeah you sort of start to you remember these things well I do and you apply it to all sorts of things like when I look up an address in the um, in the phone, you know, you do your Google search and it says it's 11k away. I know exactly that distance and the time because I've travelled it all my childhood. So even when it comes to these threads, I've got um, at one point we were living around the Mount Cravat area there and I'd walked to the bottom of the cul-de-sac and then back up to the house and that was exactly one kilometre. So I know when I look at this <laughs> and I roll out 500 metres is down to the end of the cul-de-sac, that's how much thread's on there. So two of them, I've just stitched that length. So it's, yeah, I don't know, I'm being stupid, aren't I? It's like I've got a visual in my mind of distance. So as it applies to life, I'm like, ah, oh, I've just stitched my way to the cul-de-sac and back 
three, four times. And I've got my little reels lined up on a, a ledge and when I get to the required number of used threads, the reels, I can say I've just stitched my way to the little country town that I went to school in. Isn't that silly? Silly little memory. It's nearly comforty. Anyway. I'm coming down the home straight now. So if you've got maybe some joint pain or hands that are weary, this project probably isn't for you. You might want to consider just using some gentler layers of fabric so that you're not putting your fingers to too much stress because this is hard work. It really is. That's why I think I'll be having a little break between the next bags just to have a little rest. I'll be finding a project that it's a little bit lighter work on my joints. Okay, we're coming back to that corner. Get rid of the pin. So I have jumped around on the back. You see, you can easily see where I've been. Where on some of those other seams, I, I did stay hidden. So it's up to you. Ow, there's a pin, a uh -uh, needle into the finger. Just gonna pop a few extra stitches in this end just to make sure everything try not to stitch down this seam coming down because you're going to need to bend it back to get the piece that sits there and then bend it back the other way to get that guy so don't don't get caught by stitching that down it would be easy enough to unpick if you did find that you got there and going, oh, hello, you're now non-adjustable. So now I'm just knotting off, burying my little knot in there. So as you can see, we'll be able to get needles down into there to hide stitches and things. So that will be very good. Okay, all right, there we go. So my homework, the base is on. Look at that, really good. Nice and thick. That's, yeah, love it, love it. So my homework is to attach these pieces. And we decided that one of them had to be a certain way, didn't we? Because I'll just pin that so we don't want the design to look a bit odd. So I'm going to do that, I think. And I need to leave this top edge open because we need to work out the loop and what it's going to be, what size it's going to be. I've got measurements that everyone's recommended on all those YouTube videos, but at the end of the day, we could do anything. We could even make it a decorative piece instead of the canvas, which I'm sort of thinking I might make a nice, pretty little piece to slide in there to create that loop. I like that size too. Sort of want it complementary to the design and then big enough to take the strap. Might need to be, oh, that's pretty good, isn't it? It doesn't look like it's overpowering the design. What size is that? I'd have to do a bit of math on it because you want to tuck your raw edges in. So that's nearly three inches by three inches. So I might need to add quarter of an inch either end so that we can hide our raw edges. I don't know. Why? Got to find a spot for made in Japan. I'll leave that out on the desk. So the next panel, we are going to use that. I'll pin it to the panel. So tomorrow, when we start the video, we are going to use that somewhere in the design. But in the meantime, I can stitch. 
stitch those on. Fantastic. And there's my base. I love it. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you alone. I'm sure you've got better things to be doing than hanging around yibby yabbering with me. So, yeah, enjoy your day, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.